Our partners at Bet Online continue to be your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, all the latest fighting news, and this season's NFL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV to get the bonus and get into action. Bet online where the game starts. Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back season four. And today, Private Talk, we have the pleasure of having Sarah Illustrates on the chair. We can't even say couch anymore because we've got a new <laughs> setup, and I'm loving it. Congratulations. Thanks for coming here. I feel like I've been seeing your stuff on Instagram. Oh. I don't know a lot about you, but that's why I needed to get you in this chair yes. to find out more about Sarah Illustrates. Yes. So welcome to Private Talk. Hi, how are you? I'm great. So, Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you find your way to this chair over here with Miss Texas? Um, that's a great question. Um, I guess the pandemic. That's nice. like point blank period. Um, the pandemic happened and my husband and I were literally bored at home and we started doing TikTok okay. and it like blew up. And we heard about OnlyFans and this like We've always wanted to be in that realm, if you will. Okay. We can say things on here, right? You can say whatever you like. Okay. Free I can say, say the P word, you porn. Can say <laughs> P words. We're not on. Okay. All right. We're not censored. All right. Cool. So yeah, my husband and I have both always wanted to like kind of dab into that, and I think it was like we're like fuck it, like this is our shot, like let's do it. Okay. So, so were you guys heavily like avid watchers? Did you watch together? Was it just something um, that you were kind of just comfortable in that adult world? I think, yeah, we just always wanted to do that. I don't know how, I, I don't know what other, But I mean, you're like, already doing that. I'm doing it, but yeah. like you wanted to like share with the world. So. Exactly, yeah. Like he knew that I always wanted to be like a porn star. Mm. And I think he was like, he was always down for it. Like he was like, yeah, do it. And I'm like, well, do you want to do it? And he's like, ah, yeah, I would do it. But like, I, I know I know you want you want to do it yeah. so like I got your back like and so I love that but. I feel like it's really when people especially you know older or you know when you have your career that you've done at least and then the pandemic happens and the world stops and you're yes. like damn and it's really a time to like sit down reflect like, exactly what do I really want to do what excites me what are those things and the mm -hmm. fact of having a partner to support those habits or like oh, yeah. new like you know hobbies or whatever of sorts is really interesting to see how that kind of comes into fruition is because a lot of people would say I don't want my wife to do that or I don't want my partner to do that right. or you know because they feel insecure or jealous but I think it's a really cool thing to kind of share with those people especially if that's what he knew you wanted to do I think oh, you yeah. blossom into this whole other beautiful person right oh yeah yeah he knew so, so you, you stuck a toe in I did. Not literally, but physically. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, let's dive in. Let's try this OnlyFans thing. Yeah. What was the first kind of like things that you kind of did? Like, did you go full in and do like so, boy girl? Yeah, no. The first, the first month I only did pictures. Okay. Just like lingerie pictures. I wasn't even showing a single thing <laughs> other than like what we post now on Instagram. Okay. Um, that's pretty much what I was posting. Now, was that something that you were like trying to dabble to see if you could like get the courage to do exactly more, no to I was trying to just like test the waters like mm. see like how much money we would make because okay. I at the time I think it was kind of common for girls to just be doing like picture stuff at least the girls that I knew um to just yeah just do pictures and like you know little clips but nothing full exposed okay. you know type of stuff um so we did that for like the first three months and then I slowly started to like you know, take a little bit more, show a little bit more. And it wasn't until a year into OnlyFans that he was like, people are asking for the, the sex tape. It's time to do it's it. It's time to do it. And I was like, fuck it, let's do it. How was that feeling? Like, like explain us to that. It's like, cause you go from <laughs> not doing anything, not yeah. to anything, but showing anything. Mm -hmm. Like, was, was it exciting? Were you nervous? Were you like? All of the above. Okay. Like I was super nervous. So literally, so my husband does like all the editing for all of our videos and all that. And he literally had it like in the queue and he was like, all I have to do is press this button to upload it. And like, once it's out there, Oof, it's yeah, magic. right. Once <laughs> it's out there, he's like, it's fucking out there. So do you want a couple minutes to like, you know, rethink it? And I was just like, no, just send it. And I remember when he clicked send, like I had like this huge rush of anxiety go through my body, but I was like, Okay, here we go. But it was like more like excitement mm. than like scared, it's you know? Like an adrenaline rush. You're exactly. Like, you know what? I already did it. Now I have to wait and see what other people think what, exactly. like, of what I did. Oh, yeah. Thing. But it's like, if, for me, it's always about if I feel good doing it, 
I'm gonna do it. Everything else. Right? Now, exactly. Obviously, you want a return on your investment, and you want things like that because <laughs> that's the reason why you know you kind of were bored, but you wanted the income part of it as well. Exactly. It makes sense, yeah. Where it's like. Now I think that's almost like the even more exciting part where it's like, okay, now like it's like little at Christmas. You're like, okay, right? who's going to open it? Who's going to click on this thing? How many buyers Exactly. Get? It does feel like that. That's so true. So yeah. And then like each month we just, we're making more and more and more. And it kind of just like also, I think that motivated me to like, let's fucking do more. Like what else, how else much more can we make, you know? And I think, yeah, the rest is history. That's so, exciting. So yeah. how long have you been doing all this for the weeks of the pandemic? So, so I started actually December of 2020. That's okay. like when I like started my OnlyFans. And then I didn't start doing like the, the sex stuff until like a year into it. And then I didn't start doing collabs with other creators, mm. boys and girls, until the second year mark. So, so now everything's wide open it's not just with you and your partner no yeah you work with all kinds of yes and he also women. performs with other girls as well so, okay how yeah. was that challenging are you guys married or yes just, you know? we're married yeah so how was that did that affect your marriage at all or was it did it make it even more intense or like um, closer together because now you had to communicate differently yeah no, no no we've always been open to the idea like one thing about my husband and i is like we are very like big on communication like I tell him everything, he tells me everything, we get it on the table, we figure it out, and if something's not working, we don't agree on something, then we don't make it happen, but we're on the same page with this, surprisingly, <laughs> people think we're nuts. Um, I think so I think, it, well, I always say, like, my motto is, like, different strokes for different folks. So exactly, it yeah. It may not work for somebody else, but it's that doesn't true. mean it doesn't work. It so really. I feel like as long as it doesn't trickle down into somebody else and making those people feel whatever, then, you know, right? all that matters is really you So, and yeah, we talked everything out, and he was like, nah, like, let's just keep the ball rolling like you okay. know i like it so I'm it's like, exciting All right. it's exciting Do so you guys exciting. like sit up and be like hey i think you should fuck this person are you should no yeah person. i'm always scrolling so actually my, i don't think i mentioned this but my husband has only done bggs okay. with me and the other Explain girl the private talk what that is so boy girl girl scenes he hasn't done like a solo okay. collab and I'm like, fucking do it. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, the girls are waiting. They okay. want you. Like, okay. let's do it. So he's just like, I don't want to say camera shy, but like, I don't know what is, actually, I don't know what is, what, it, what he's waiting for. Would you want to be there while it's happening? Or would you want to uh, wait and like have him come and tell you afterwards? No, I'll be there. he's worried about your feelings. No, yeah, I think he definitely is, but I'm I'm good holding the camera, baby. Let me yeah. hold the camera. Let me get in there. But Let I me feel get like the angles. But I sometimes, like, sometimes when women, like, you seem a very, like, alpha, like, you know what you want, you know, you're very upfront and communicate, like you said, yeah. about what you need. I think that sometimes the guys are like, are you sure, though? Yeah. Like, are you really sure? Because <laughs> no, once yeah. I do it, you can't go back. And then it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? For me, it's like, you know, I at one point was married to someone in the business, and for mm -hmm. me, it was never, I was the same way. It was never about the physical act because mm -hmm. I'd rather you enjoy it if that's what you enjoy and you're telling me about it. Yeah. It's the like the hidden things, you know, that that's would be would be a deal breaker. But I feel like it's more exciting. It's no, more yeah, like, I love it. Go and do it. I just, one thing about me, and I think with my husband too, we don't have like a jealous bone in our body. Like I try, I try to be jealous. I just can't do it. I just like, I just love, but I don't maybe know. you're just so comfortable in your relationship that there's no need yeah, to be jealous. I that's think true. security is really important in relationships. So if you have that, then what's the point of having a, a jealous? It's anything? true. Yeah, we've been together for 14 years so I'm like so he's there, stuck with me he ain't going nowhere I love that. <laughs> so is there someone that you maybe have a wish list for your man that you would want him to like be a part with maybe oh. like, so we can manifest as we're big here about yeah um I, so I I still feel like I'm like a small creator in the porn world even though like I don't know some people say I'm not some people say I am I don't know I'm like somewhere in the middle I guess but I would love to see Alex work with Sheree Deville okay. just because like she's like an OG mm -hmm. um and I love her like her personality like she just seems really like badass have so. you met her before I've never met her okay, she's, awesome. um, she's been a guest here on the private talk okay she's cool definitely a good vibe she's yeah very, like I feel like anybody could be like a teacher of walking him in to be like come on mm -hmm. come yes Let me show you the way yeah she definitely has a soothing like Fine, let me just take all my clothes off. Right, like, she knows what she's doing. Too, yeah, sure. I need to like take notes from her. Uh, but no, yeah, I would love to see my husband work with her. And what about yourself? Do you have like a dream wish? Oh, I think I hit everybody. Okay. I hit everybody so far on my list. Um, now it's time for a new list. It's time for a new list. I, I do have, I don't want to like give it away, but I do have some of the people that I really want to work with already scheduled. Okay. So that's coming soon. <laughs> All right. So there you go. So make sure that you follow her on your OnlyFans because she's got some coming soon. Oh, things. yes. I like that. Yes. So tell us how you got your name, Sarah Illustrates. How did that come into about? Was it from your TikTok days? Was it because are you an artist? How does that so, kind of play into 
before we started any kind of social media, my husband did photography and videography, and his name was Alex Illustrates. Okay. Like on Instagram and all that. And you married into the name. I married into the name. I did, <laughs> literally. Um, but no, once we started TikTok, that was obviously his name. He just kept it going because he's like, oh, this is how people already know me. Mm -hmm. um, and then he said, you should create your own TikTok to do like hot girl stuff because we do like couple related stuff on our main channel, which is our biggest TikTok channel. And I was like, okay. So actually I had it as my like my legal name. And he was like, no, 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 we're married. Like you're my other half. So it needs to be Sarah Illustrates. And I was like, no, I don't like that. Like it's no, I don't like it. And then he was like, well, you have no choice. <laughs> and then it grew on me and believe it or not, I actually do draw. Okay. So I illustrate some things. So it kind of actually made sense at the end of the day. But I guess it's just from like an artsy perspective because people are like, do you guys draw? Like, yeah. do you guys make art? Like, what is I this? Think sex is art. I mean, I'm, thank I'm you. Finally, like, someone on my page. I said sex is to me like my expression of art. It's how, you know, I'm very like in tune with my body from like, yes. you know, when I was, you know, a younger age, when I, especially when I started at 21, I was just like, I love the female body and yes. I don't have a problem being naked. And so I was like, this is how my art is how I express it. I don't a girl draw after my own all, heart. But I like for me, I'm like, I'll pose for a drawing. <laughs> right? so, you know, the expression of it, I think art comes in many different forms. And even with, you know, your content that you're creating now, it's mm -hmm. your vision, your artistry and your, you know, what you can really showcase to your fans. I think that that's a beautiful Literally. thing. Sarah, you you <laughs> just like took every like word everything I try to explain to people I'm like yes you just said it it's well, it's an art great delivery we can package that up and like tell them look right. I'm just an artist I'm an artist an yeah artist. don't worry about it describe something that's exciting in your life right now I know you have only fans um, and that's been you know a good you know thing for two the last two years you started doing more stuff what else do you have that's exciting in your life right now um I guess the fact that I just recently moved to L A and I'm getting Sorry. like I'm getting all these opportunities like being here on this podcast today. Um, so many great things. I feel like I'm just being blessed every day with something new and I'm just, yeah. What that's made exciting. you decide to make, a, you know, make the move to LA? Was it based solely for work and, per, you know, pop, per, 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 I can't even talk, for work things as far as like being in the right places and the right time? Exactly. That's exactly it. Literally everybody that I have like made friends with, um, and people that like I like to work with like on like a creator's level to like bounce ideas off of is in LA So I'm like I need okay. to be in LA. Nice. Yeah, so you were doing TikToks before you did OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Were you kind of like um, educated in the background of social media or how did you kind of fall into the TikTok realm? Because I feel um, like nowadays it's like anything from dancing stuff to like, you know, advice to spiritual things. Like you could really kind of find wherever. Everything. But it's yeah. like, I think in the beginning for me, it was overwhelming that I'm like, how do I fit into the platform mm -hmm. like this where I'm not a dancer? Right. I can't do these things where it's just like so much more now. <laughs> How did you kind of find out your niche within that? So with our main couple channel, that's the channel Alex Illustrates, um, we literally, so we worked together, my husband and I, prior to working together now, we've always worked together, that's how we met. And we worked at a microbrewery and he was my boss. He was, like, was literally my boss. Did you sleep with the boss? I did mm. a couple times. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, so we, he created TikTok because all the young people that we work with were like, oh, like get on this TikTok app. And my husband's always about like the next best thing. Like what's new, what's popping, like, you know, like let's get on it. And I'm like an old lady. I'm like, no, that's for teenagers. We're not doing TikTok. And then he, so he did a bunch of like solo videos and like overnight gained like 18,000 followers. Mm. And this is like right before the pandemic like officially hit. Okay. And I was like, get that, like get off this app. You're an old man, like stop, you know? And he's not old by the way. Uh, <laughs> but he got me to do a few like sounds and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun, right? You just gotta memorize a few lines. Sounds like what? Can you give us an example? Um, so the one that we did that I remember, this was trending like in 2020 was a Sofia Vergara um, clip from Modern Family, mm -hmm. I think that's what it's called, and it was like, um, like, I'm not mad at you, or, I don't know, I can't remember the exact words, but I tried it, and I got it, like, on the first shot, and I was like, oh, I'm actually, one hit wonder, I'm like, I'm not too bad at this, let me, uh, let's do another one, and it kind of became addicting, but what really set us off was, um, doing skits, mm. so he, the skit that really, like, shot us from, like, 18,000 followers to, like, 500,000 followers overnight, was um, telling my wife what to do. I forget how it's worded, but basically saying like, 
I'm my wife's boss at work, and so I get to boss her around. Mm. And so he like kind of set that up and close to the like the camera. And then the next shots were him like take out the trash, and it's me like, <sighs> and then like taking out the trash, and he's like pour me a beer, and then I'm like. <sighs> like pouring the beer hella irritated and those we started to do multiple of those and that took off and so right so it became like a little series it came a series yeah nice. and literally i think he started to like name them to like part three of like so how many wife, parts are there of this series I, at now? this point i don't know <laughs> it's but like 155 and you're like mm, leave me the fuck alone <laughs> yeah right so we've been like we've been at 1.4 million on tiktok for like a good amount of time but um, that's awesome it's good but tiktok is getting like more and more like what's the word here how can i Censored? be nice exactly yes like you can't like post really anything anymore <laughs> as far as like as far as content as far as like your skits or like so, as far as nudity or like what do like, you mean by that yeah like pushing the limits like with you know like the more adult humor kind okay. of stuff like you know not super crazy like racier, sexual like a little maybe bit jokes racier, or yeah. like kind of things and it, it, there are a handful of um content creators i won't name anybody who get away with it and it's fine i get it you know we're not on everybody's good side i guess but um it's a little unfair tiktok <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah so that's one thing that we struggle with right now is like girl join the club i can't even post anything with anything because my butt's so big and right. it's like you can't i'm like you're wearing Instagram, a thong. i'm like right? i'm not i'm like it's a full body of like bottom shorts but i look like there's a thong because my ass is so fat yeah but same. even like being on tiktok in the beginning like i got flagged a lot which i wasn't even posting anything crazy mm -hmm. it was just my name and then there's like mm. the, you know algorithm to haters to the new guidelines to yes. like whatever that it's hard to like really know from navigate from app to app what is like what and where do these standards come from like right? i'm just like i and just feel like there's change. a target on your back because you did yes. it like sex work you know what i mean exactly and even myself was like i hadn't shot anything in over five six years but it's oh. like that still never leaves you oh yeah so it's like oh alexis texas oh she must be doing something with her ass right? like it's just <laughs> but you know i feel like there's things like that where it's like being the content creator and being like the artist and doing that it's like you just got to keep doing it you know exactly. not necessarily like to get flagged or banned or whatever mm -hmm. but you do it within the way that you kind of have to conform to what's going on you exactly know, you yeah like that means you gotta like switch you know yeah, switch it up because it's so. like you know at the end of the day sex is gonna sell and the reason why these people are really hating is because they can't get a monetary like value from that so that's why they started implementing things in their apps of like exactly. subscriptions and all these different things where it's exactly. like you know what we see everybody wants to get paid but you know give us ours yeah. just let us have just it have just it. let yeah. us have it give me my money <laughs> what would you say is unique about you oh um can I say nothing? <laughs> I'm I sure don't there's know. one thing unique about you for the fact that you were just bored in the house with your man um, and you decided to create this whole new lifestyle for yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty unique. I mean, did your friends and family in your prior life to doing OF and things like that think that it was something far fetched for you to do? Was it kind of on brand? Like, um, I think like all my close friends, like I grew up with, they were like, oh yeah, obviously like it's about time. No shocker. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, my, so most of, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this kind of like dark. We want the truth here. But at Talk. my, my entire family is like dead. Okay. <laughs> so I really don't like, sorry about that. Have anybody. It's all good. Okay. Uh, and I'm an only child on top of it. So I think that really kind of like set the bar for me to like, kind of be like, fuck it. Like I ain't got nobody. Let's do it. You know? But you have yourself, you have your man, you created your family within those things. So I think that that's, you know, I get the premise of where that starts from. But it's also yeah. like knowing that I think underlyingly, like with the from the beginning of the conversation, saying like your husband knew that you always wanted to do it mm -hmm. is really leaning into what works for you. Yeah. So it's like if they weren't past or anything like that, I maybe think that you would still do the same thing, maybe with a little bit more hesitation of what that looks like. But it's like, I think overall, if you are who you are and it oh, doesn't yeah. go away so it's like if you were to do only fans 20 years ago well, mind you age wise but you know to <laughs> yeah. like now in current day i think that some people just either have it or you don't yeah yeah no i, I completely agree uh, i'm actually i'm so glad that i started at 30 years old and not 18. <laughs> why <laughs> would you say that explain i think i would have like i'm still like i feel like i'm st i'm 32 i feel like i'm immature as hell like i act like a kid like I'm but why still, is that a problem it's not a problem but i think your husband like, has to like it no he loves it um but I think I would have made a lot of like goofy choices, like, choices at 18. 
Um, I fair. did not being in the industry, so <laughs> yeah, I'm glad a lot of that stuff is not on camera. Um, but no, I think it was a, a like a like you know I was more mature, older. I knew kind of like where I was in life and like you know what the next step more was. like a moral compass of like exactly what's right what's wrong for you yeah and so I'm glad I I think I made the right everything happens at the right time okay. right divine timing divine timing yes when is the last time you had sex yesterday mm. for lunch oh for yeah. lunch I yeah like my how husband it was, was like, like a lunchtime delight yeah my husband and I finished um filming uh for TikTok and he was like uh, after lunch, uh, do you have any plans? I'm like, no, I don't have anything you know, like scheduled. And he's like, okay, well, I got something scheduled. And in, in my head, I'm like, oh, like, we have we have work to do. We right? got a Zoom call. We yeah, gotta go do we something. have something yeah. to do. So in my mind, I just ate my lunch and was like, okay, like, what's next? And he was like, no, let's go to the room. I was like, oh, okay. Cute. I love that. I'm like, do you want to film it? He's like, no, let's just do it. I'm like, okay. Do you, <laughs> with that being said, do you feel like because you film a lot of things now, is your, does it kind of hinder your sex life or do you have to plan the things or do you um, not always necessarily. pull the camera out? Because that's the thing too. It's like, we need this content, but then yeah. it's like, I want to be intimate. And it's like the yeah. struggle of like, where does that fine line kind of So blur? one thing about filming with your spouse is that it's like for me at least it's like it's super real it's super raw and it's it is intimate yeah. i love it i think so we actually used to film each other back Prior in the day th th yeah people keep asking for that footage i apologize it's not coming <laughs> it's <laughs> that's just, the state that's what you know that's, personal home that's videos staying in the vaults okay um my apologies but no and i think like for both of us like filming it just makes it that much more hotter even if we don't release that footage yeah like just knowing that we're like we're filming so it's already it. kind of like your program to like kind of do it because it was yeah, something you already, we already did doing yeah it exactly so it just makes it more hotter and also like filming with me watching him film with another girl and i think you know vice versa um when we get together after our shoots it's like more like intimate i don't know how to so explain do you that. fuck after your shoot or yes, do you all the time okay so yeah, it's, it's like, like a like a reclaim like this is my dick okay. this is my pussy is like. that what you say while you're doing it you would be like uh, give me that dick back i need yeah been a I, bad actually, boy. I do say that i'm like this is my dick i'm taking it back okay yeah ownership <laughs> i feel like that's great because i feel like i'm single and and um when i was shooting in the industry it was like you'd have to some people be like okay well like you're in quarantine for 24 hours i'm like oh what the gosh. fuck does that mean like fuck you bye yeah but like you know what I mean? because then you have people that just don't know but i think that it's sexy again and leaning into you really like what you do oh, and yeah. you we really get off to because like it's almost being a cuckold but not because you're not physically in that room oh but yeah it's no, like, no we hate that word but he is not you know, a cuck yeah but it's not and it, for me i don't think cuck is like a derogatory thing it's more of like you get off to your woman getting off to another partner not yeah. necessarily being in the room and that's necessarily what the cuck is about but even talking about it coming home oh, and yeah. being like hey like, like you know i had this really great scene you know i loved it when she ate my pussy whatever and yeah. just describing it is more of like an erotic novel to mm -hmm. like your vagina and exactly your dick, you know? yeah no yeah a lot of people we call them civilians people that are not in the industry uh the civilians don't comprehend that you can have that happen like you can you know fuck somebody else and then go home to your husband and have it all be normal <laughs> but i think that's also goes to like i mean you either get it or you don't i think what people view sex yeah, is and very I'm done explaining. different and i think that again it's like it's a sacred thing you don't have to explain to anybody and mm -hmm. as long as you enjoy what you're doing and yeah. then you know fuck everybody else exactly. that's how i feel the number one comment that i get is like does your husband know you no, like no, no he, does he has not no know. idea see i he have this no idea that i'm just like no, <laughs> no my yeah. husband what right yeah i'm like wait i'm married wait <laughs> oh you're that like, guy you've been like which one yeah which one yeah yeah because then it's like it throws them off because at the end of the day even if you tell them a thousand times that he does know mm -hmm. like they'll be like but does he yeah like you're lying to me right i'm like no. he held the camera even hotter he edited even the whole video hotter. so what <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve oh um like where do i begin where do yeah where do i begin i knew this question was going to come up I, I really don't have any pet peeves like they're not too crazy because I, I think I've learned. Well, we just heard cuckold was kind of a pet peeve. Yeah, that's like, probably that my one. biggest pet peeve at the moment. <laughs> I just, you know, I know now that there's so many different t like types of people in the world, and I just gotta like, you know, not everybody's everyone's cup of tea, and you kind of just, you know, you, you accept that and walk away, Ag agree to disagree, right? But yeah, I'd probably say like the comments, like the dumbass comments that I get on all social media platforms is like a huge pet peeve. Do you kind of, do you read all the comments? Do you comment no. back? Do you let them get to you? Or do you kind of just now at this point, like, 
fuck it. All of the above. Um, I try not to read the comments. I am actually a super sensitive person, especially when the comments is like about me, um, like like attacking like my personality. Um, I, that, that bothers me a lot because I feel like, you know, you saw a 15 second video of me. Like, you don't fucking know me. Yeah. Okay. Like food for thought. <laughs> it's one of those things I think that if you know who you are, then why like you know i think once we get triggered by things it's like a mirror image of something that we do not like about ourselves so yeah. it's like the inner reflection of like why do i feel this way why do i make these things happen where it's like at the end of the day like you said they don't know you exactly they and have then you start questioning seconds, like am i doing this wrong but am i, I not doing this like, but i think it's like fuck the questioning it's like if you feel good about it, again going back to like you like mm -hmm. you do this for your fans because you love to do it and that's how you're showcasing yourself but yeah. at the end of the day they don't know you. Exactly. They know what you show of you. You're very, you know, you seem very open about, you know, being honest like that, about how it is with I'm your partner. I'm too open. And, and, but I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think being vulnerable, especially in a business like this, kind of makes you yeah. go further and shows you, you know, who, how unique you are because of like, some people are so closed net and don't say mm -hmm. those things until 20 years into their career. And then they've gone through something and exactly. doing whatever, where it's like, it's really staying focused on knowing like, you know what? Nobody can make me feel bad but myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I can only make myself, you know, you make you, your decision of how you kind of make, how your feelings are going to be that day. Exactly. Or maybe you're a little too sensitive or whatever. And then you got to think like, look, this isn't personal. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had a shit day and they said whatever. And they just want to rise it at me because That's most fans what I tell myself. do. And they're just like, no, but I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. But I, I really love your work. Okay, but why didn't you say that? Yeah. You know, so it's like kind of food for thought of just being like, you know what, flip it and be yeah. like, you know what? I feel sorry that you feel that way, but I don't feel that way about myself. And exactly. I'm going to keep fucking who the fuck I want right? to. Subscribe right. and like. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I don't read comments too much anymore. Uh, especially have, on our couple channel because people are like. I can imagine. They probably like, they just like, attack your relationship exactly, and yeah. kind of things like that. It's, yeah, it's annoying. So, yeah, I, I've learned when the. When we first started TikTok, I was like reading everyone word for word, and he's just like, my husband's like, you cannot, like put you it, specifically put cannot it down, put, <laughs> yeah, it, put down. it down, yeah. Is there anything that you regret saying no to? Oh, um, no. We only live once. Fucking do it. All right. Take risk. Fuck yeah. Yeah. What would you say is the best advice you've ever gotten? Best advice, um, from my lovely grandmother. Um, who Shout I'm named to Granny. Who, who I'm named after. Oh, I love that. Um, she told me, and I was like really young. I won't say, <laughs> I won't say how young. <laughs> but I feel she, like that's gonna make the story better. Right. Like, she <laughs> told me. She said, because so my grandma's Mexican and her name was Sarah, but I was Sarita. So I'm, I'm little Sarah. She told me, Sarita, if you got it, flaunt it. And as like a young girl, I I didn't know what that meant. And she was like, because one day you're going to be my age and you ain't going to be able to flaunt it. And so, and I still really didn't know what that meant. And as I got older, I was like, oh, like, oh shit. Like, grandma like, was right. I do got it. I'm going to flaunt it. Okay, grandma. I don't know if that was the best advice to give your granddaughter. Um, <laughs> but it stuck with you. It and it did. became no, very my memorable because I feel like, like you sit into it, right? Because yeah, it's like. She was a tough cookie. And I feel like I, she was a Virgo. <laughs> so she like definitely, and she kind of like, she didn't raise me, but she babysat me almost every day after mm -hmm. school. And I think, like, she had, like, a hard ass, like, I don't give a fuck, fuck you, I'm going to do this kind of attitude. And I definitely, like, was slowly absorbing that with, like, not even realizing that mm -hmm. until I was, like, a teenager. And I was like, oh, <laughs> hello. You're little Sarah for <laughs> yeah, a reason. I'm going to fucking do what I got to do. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Grandma, for the great advice. <laughs> Shout out to Grandma. Do you have any daily rituals that you do to kind of keep you grounded? You know, now that you have this new kind of, I can't always say new life, but this new yeah. like work environment that you put yourself into and kind of dive into. Is Definitely. there something that you do to kind of ground yourself so you don't get a separation of family life to work life? Exactly, yeah. So um, I'm a mom, um, so I have to disconnect from the internet world uh, every day. But no, one thing that I like to do is go to the gym and I like just let out all my <laughs> like stress and worries of the day out at the gym so that is definitely a huge part of my like weekly ritual but my daily rituals consist of like writing journaling like even if it's you know a sentence mm -hmm. just like i need to like get my thoughts out on paper just to like you know like literally like take the load off yeah. and like put it down you know so i put it down on paper 
And that really helps. I highly recommend. And it, like with manifesting, I love manifesting. For sure. I definitely think a lot of people like, you know, we process, you know, feelings, but we don't really mm. move through our feelings and know what to yes. do with them. So it's like, you know, and we always say like, oh, you know, we always have the answers within. But if you're not having someone that you feel comfortable speaking to those things exactly. or like whatever. And I think like sometimes journaling is the best option is yeah, because 100%. you're still having a conversation with yourself and just letting it just all. Yeah. So I, I mentioned earlier, like I'm an only child. So I've, I've been having conversations with myself for 32 years do you talk back <laughs> if i'm in the mirror yes no i'm just kidding i love that um but no yeah i um i love spending time alone too like even if it's just like sitting in the bathtub or in the car like just having like i don't know 10 minutes to myself and just just breathing just not letting I always like to think Grounding, that I'm yeah. the pond mm. and you know there's lots of fish and things in the pond and just you know there's let this let the fish swim don't those are thoughts the that fish are the release. thoughts yeah. yeah let them pass you're just you're just the pond just sit there. just the pond yes I like that <laughs> that's good advice that's yeah. good advice what are your thoughts on OnlyFans <clears throat> Like, from what standpoint? Um, the standpoint of, you know, the, the platform itself, mm -hmm. you know, what it actually, the advantages of what it does, and you being, you know, a mom, and I'm not sure what your career was prior to, but like the, you know, alleviation of like having financial freedom from this kind of platform and kind of segue in your life to maybe a nine to five to now an independent contractor where you make your own hours. How does you feel like OnlyFans kind of helped you kind of maybe get there or the advantages of having an OnlyFans platform? Um, so actually I've never worked the hardest in my life okay. as I do now or, or the last three years having an OnlyFans. So prior to doing OnlyFans, I was a bartender and a server for about 14 years at the same restaurant. Um, where, where I met, you met your husband. Where I met my man. And my um, man's, my man's. the one thing about that place that was so beautiful was that it was a mom and pop shop. The owner and my husband were like besties. He was in our wedding. And there wasn't really like, like a tight knit like like schedule if you will so it was like very flexible very yeah. open and my husband's the kind of guy that's like always been like i'm gonna be my own boss mm -hmm. like I, I can't fucking work for nobody like fuck that shit and i also cannot work a nine to five like i gotta make my own hours and and so i like when i got with him i knew that he was like that and it kind of like made me think like oh wait like why am i working for why people? yeah i don't need to work for other people too so i was actually a nursing student and I, I dropped out, officially officially dropped out when COVID hit. Okay. Um, but I was like, wait, do I really want to work like 12 hours a day dealing with like depressing, sad people who are sick? <laughs> you know, no offense to the ill people, but I was like, I really don't want to do that. And I'm super sensitive. So mm -hmm. I think that would like be super hard on me. Like yeah. I'd go home and just be a, like a mess. Right. So I think like having the OnlyFans is just, it's fucking hard. Like it's not easy. Don't think it's easy because it's not. It really is. It, for me, it's not. I'm like, I'm busting ass like all the time, like to get where I want to be with my numbers. And I hit those numbers. So I guess, you know, you put in what you get out, right? Yeah. Or what you get out of it is what you put into it. Um, but one of the best things about having it is that, is that you literally can work from anywhere in the world. So that's like, I guess, number one. Okay. Uh, and the amount of money you make is endless it's inf inf infinite in my opinion you just gotta you know put in you gotta the do the work mm -hmm. and sometimes the work is is dirty but you gotta do it hey. <laughs> sometimes you gotta get your hands dirty right? or other things dirty good dirty good yes. kind of dirty but no yeah this is the hard i've never been so stressed out of my life actually but so grateful and blessed all at the same time but um i actually had a few girlfriends who were interested like oh like like tell me about it how do i get started i'm like bitch you don't even you no and then I lay it out on the table and then they were like, oh no, I can't do that. I'm like, yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's the thing is like, I think, I think because of the pandemic, it put more of a light on OnlyFans and like, because this platform was yes. already around previous to that and mm -hmm. it was already an adult related thing and not only of that, but I feel like because OnlyFans, I feel like when more people that weren't in adult industry started going on the platform, it became such a big more th like a bigger light of the thing. People were rapping about it. There was all these songs. Yes. Even Beyonce rapped yes. about it. You know what I mean? So it's like it was giving more exposure to something that was already there and giving showing what that access was. And in the beginning of myself, I felt a little 
turned off by it because I was like, oh, everyone's, mm-hmm. you know, they, they think it's fast money, they think mm-hmm. it's whatever, but it, like you said, it is a job. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's a hard, a harder job than sometimes nine to five is because you're, you know, you're your own boss. Yeah, it's a and, 24-7 and job. And for you, it's like, you either, like you said, you put in what you get out of mm-hmm. it. So it's like, if you want to be successful, if you want to make the big numbers, then you have to do a lot. It's not like something you put one picture and you're making a million dollars. Yeah, you know no. what I mean? Are there anomalies girls think. <laughs> that happen because there's celebrities that do things that maybe put like a naked photo or an enticing mm-hmm. thing that does that. And I think that that's what kind of people give people the wrong idea of how easy it is is because that shit ain't easy. No, it's you not. Know, you know, it's being a creator, especially like carving out the time to like talk to your fans or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you're constantly working every day from texting to shooting new content to making sure that your people are you know making sure that your subscribers are resubscribing you know yes. and so I think that if you can be you know it's it's an initially like your own website back in the day mm-hmm. you know what I mean? it's like you're eliminating the middleman where it's like if you actually want to do well you can yeah. if you want to do eh, you mm-hmm. can too it's just like but I think that when people have this idea of like, oh, I'm gonna make so much money, you can. But yeah, you definitely can. You fucking have to work for it. Yeah, I mean, I met some girls who, you know, I think I don't want to like bash any body type or anything like that. But like, there's literally a niche for every body type, every skin color, every hair type, every, you know, you name it, everything, right? And so I've met some girls who you would probably see at the grocery store and think, oh, no way, like there's no way and they're making they're clearing like six hundred thousand dollars a month yeah and i'm like you know but they're also putting in the work yeah so you can look like this or you can look like that and you just really don't know yeah yeah, it doesn't matter how you look honestly it's just the the type of work you put in agreed agreed we love we love an only fans although we hate that they also are discriminating from people too and they're you know they're like a little better i know yeah there's yeah yeah. (laughs) We won't talk about that. (laughs) What would you say that is a common sexual act that you just dislike? Oh. You're um, just like, eh, I'll pass that. What is it? I think, so, (laughs) like, being peed on. Okay. I know some girls are like, oh, my God, I fucking love it. And I'm like, you know, I'm good. Have you been peed on? (laughs) No. Maybe you, I don't, don't knock until you try <laughs> I, it, girl. No, it's so true because I did like I did a bunch of like foot stuff, and I, I'm not really crazy about like feet. But if somebody's Sad all over story, my feet, I, I have a foot fetish. Do you really? I do. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So if somebody's <laughs> all over my feet, Karen Lee, um, I'm okay with that. Like I'm all good with that. I love it. Um, but I personally don't want your toes in my mouth. Oh, well, maybe a girl. Mm. I'll do a girl's foot. Well, but there's I don't a difference between old- female feet and men <laughs> feet, although I have sucked men feet too, but most yeah. of them aren't very, like, put together. I think it's more for me, it's like <laughs> the female, but, like, for me, it's about, like, if your toes are done. For me, it's like if mm-hmm. you don't have your feet, like, done, then your pussy's not good. Right. Because if you, like, you gotta, like, have the same thing. If you have, like, toenail polish that's, like, hanging on and yeah. struggling, you gotta bust a pussy. That's just what it is. I don't... You, don't you know? look at my nails. I rip my nails off on the way here. Don't I said look, toes. I said toes. That's true. That's true. I can't see them. They're hiding from me. They, they are hiding. Maybe I Kieran, do have a pedicure, though. I was like, maybe Kieran freaked you out too much. You gotta put your toes away. I yeah, <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, that is... But I'm, I'm, op- I'm opening up more with, like, the feet stuff. But just I just... I, yeah, the pee don't. I, don't you know, I went through a pee fetish myself. You I've did. Ta- I have talked about this, and not because I wanted to be pee on, peed mm-hmm. on, because I was peeing on people, mm. but because I was peeing on people and I was being allowed to. I only thought it was fair to like return the favor. Mm. It didn't do anything to me sexually <laughs> at all. Although I did let someone pee in my mouth, definitely didn't like. <laughs> doesn't doesn't it taste terrible? I didn't swallow. I spit that day. Oh, like you normal. spit that day. <laughs> well, okay. Can you swallow pee? Yes. Because it doesn't you, like make you sick or anything. No, because they say like I think the reason why this even started this whole like if I think about it, I was really we were really wasted. It was with yeah, but initially it was because they were saying you could like if you were like stranded or whatever like you could drink your pee mm. because like but you have to, i don't know if you have to like what you have to do to i don't know the specific facts yeah, boil about it. It, or like <laughs> leave it out because it's i don't really know but anyways we we're like oh it's, it's not it can't be bad for you right now yeah. depending on the same thing with how guys come taste it depends mm. on your diet how is it's going to be if you eat salty food it's going to taste don't salty. eat asparagus if, no is what you're saying well i think the asparagus <laughs> your pee is going to smell regardless mm-hmm. and so that's you know plus yeah. but you know any salt any like fatty things anything uh, that are like like yeasty yeah. that shit's oh, gonna God, make it yeah. bad so okay. it's like you know but makes sense 
I, it had no taste. Like it had no taste huh. when I did it. Mind you, I didn't swallow it, but yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't like making me throw up. It was more like, yeah, we're doing this. We're in See, it. We're yeah. like, yeah. Not a lot of things make me gag. I have a good gag reflex. Okay. Um, but I just imagine like, cause I, I think I'm imagining the smell. Mm. a pee and, and that's that what makes would turn you, you off. see for yeah. me like after the effect of like okay doing it not even just the, let's forget the mouth part but like being peed <laughs> on was the part that turned me on was like the warm sensation of something taboo oh the so, taboo so yeah it that's was like hot. oh like i can't I be doing like this, this yeah but i like it and yeah. it wasn't even like peeing on my pussy mm-hmm. or peeing on me it was like some like one time someone pissed on my foot <laughs> but like just because we were in the shower and we were like oh well, if i peed on you i'm gonna pee on you know kind yeah, of thing but yeah. i was like i kind of like it i don't know why but yeah. i don't know where this is going so for a while yeah. i went through a pee phase like where i wanted to pee on people hmm. and then this one guy after a scene he let me he was a bald man and he let me stand over him and piss on his head and i felt so it was like a Superman complex. Oh, wow. And then I tried to do it one time after that to a partner, <laughs> and he was like, you can't pee on me. And then I had stage fright ever since. Oh, I can't pee on you can't anybody. pee. No. See, I, I'm also afraid of having stage fright, because I have, like, stage fright if, like, there's a bunch of, like, people in the bathroom sometimes, mm. and they're just, like, staring at you. It's really bad. I was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to pee on you. I'm going to pee on you. And it just couldn't wouldn't come, come out. Yeah. So I had to stop talking shit about pee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... I couldn't deliver, and I don't like to not deliver. Yeah, actually, I had. Um, so I say, don't knock it till you try. That's true. I think I might. I think I'm, I might be open to trying. I heard okay. that like being peed inside of mm. is really cool. See, I don't know if I could go that far, and I like pee. Like I haven't heard like peeing, like peeing in your pussy or peeing in your asshole. Um, both. Okay, I've both heard peeing are, in the people asshole say that thing, both but that good. to me is just weird. Like, where does that go? Does it absorb yeah. in your body? Like, I got a lot I of I just questions. feel like the, like the gas tank is going to overflow, you know? Like, the mm. gas nuzzles in the gas yeah, tank. Yeah, and who cleans that up? Gonna, I don't want yeah, to. I don't want, I don't, oh, God. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, we it's don't want to do that. Pissy, yeah, quick. I just got, this I just got visuals. <laughs> we haven't even got to Truth of Texas. We're all, we're here. I love it. All right. Have you ever taken a souvenir home? Oh, yeah, every day. They're kids. <laughs> sperm? So I'm I, also the sperm. So one of my little, like, fetishes is to... I always take the loads on my face. Okay. Like, please and I thank like you. I like how you're like... Yes, on this little cute face. Ooh. Um, but I... One of my, like... My, so that's like is that like you're like in your writer I only take come on my pretty face you don't take it anywhere um, else? no I'll take, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it anywhere there's been times where like uh, the, the guy can't make it to the face oh. you know so it's have like you ever on my it ass. in your eye so that was what, what I was gonna say next Project. I love it in my love eye it? yes Bitch, that like where that that, that sting <laughs> makes me feel like yep I did my job for the day we're good <laughs> You are like no other. I've never heard any female ever say you like being came in your eye. Because it feels like like the sperm's trying to penetrate through your yes. fucking eye. And I'm like, this is not your portal. Leave. No, yeah. If I leave with red eyes, I know I did a good job. Girl, that <laughs> Or hurts. he did a good job. That hurts. No. no, he has horrible aim. He should have gotten it where the fuck he was supposed to get it. And you're a professional. You better do your motherfucking job. That's yeah. how I felt. Right. I used to hate that shit. Or the worst would <laughs> be like... You'd get, you'd get a cum shot, and then it's like on your eyelash, and you're like, I can't oh, move my yes. eyelash. I'm not gonna move because if I move my eye if or like open do anything, it, then I'd be just... like spider web, like yes. So then I'd be like, immediately, I'm like, I just can't so take that no, shit. yeah, I always like come in the eye. I you love like it. I'll, that? I'll give them like a like 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 we know like when you're waiting for it, like you know, you just give them like a little like like a little wink, like like signaling them like hit. Hit the this target. One, this one. Right. See, see where I'm winking? Yeah, hit that. <laughs> see that eyelash? I've heard it all. I mean, <laughs> private talk. I don't come in my eyes. Not that all of y'all are going to come in my eyes or come on me ever. But <laughs> I, don't. I don't think you should aim for the eyes. Aim below the nose and back down. Yeah, it's like, here. Yeah, when aim. we work with girls, they're always like, right here. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like right here. <laughs> You're like actually right yeah. in here. Right in the eyes. Please. That's so interesting. Yeah, I What love is it. it about the feeling that you like about it though? Like just because, or is it just the redness of like, um, like what? Like, I don't know. I I'm think like, it like hurts. You said, it's, I guess that's not really like taboo, <laughs> but I like like, you know, like feeling it. Like I have a high, high tolerance for pain. Okay, okay. And I think like any kind of pain makes me feel like, yes. Like you, yes. like you got it. Like yeah, it like turns something. me on even more. Okay, like, okay. Yeah, I don't like, knock, my I don't knock your little fetishes, but I have yet to get it in both eyes. Nobody can do that. They haven't done it yet. So Karen I mean, might be able to. If anybody, true. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna text him right now and be like, Karen, 
Next time, aim for both. She told me she wants. Yes. Nobody's ever done Actually, it. I worked with him last week, and he got it in one eye, and it was super red. He's like, "Oh my god, I like you need to go to the chemist." Because most people like they like. I mean, I've seen some situations where girls yeah. get really upset with yeah. like dudes, like mm-hmm. whatever. And I'm like, for me, I'm like, okay, they didn't do it intentionally. Although I did have one person I knew he fucking did it intentionally. Yeah. And I'm like, you. <laughs> no, please do it intentionally to me. I want it. How interesting. You should put that on your writer if you don't have it. Be right? like, hey, yeah, I come love in my it. Eyes I, only. Yes. Good cum shots for <laughs> everybody. Do you have any tattoos? I do. I have six. Do you tattoos. have any that you regret? Um, all of them. Oh. <laughs> You're like, take them all off. <laughs> so I got all of them when I was in high school, um, like in my kitchen table, like my friends oh, had tattoo guns. Like prison tattoos? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so actually one of my <laughs> friends, he like, he literally came over and he was like, hey, like I got a tattoo gun. I'm like, awesome. He's like, yeah, you want to like play with it? I'm like, sure. And he had never tattooed a single body in his life. And, and, you I, just and thought I was, it was like, a great idea. There you go. Right here, buddy. And it, actually, it's not a bad tattoo. That's probably one of my favorites. The out of the, what is what is it? It's a music cleft. Okay. So it's like a, a music staff. And then like, um, it's like it looks like a wavy page and like with music notes on like the wavy Did you page. play music? Did you have a I music sing. background? OK. Yeah, I like to sing. Um, can and, you sing us something fun? Uh, I uh, la 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 yeah la la la. That's all I got. Um, <laughs> no, like, I don't. Warm I don't think too much. It's things. like my my one little thing that I, I like to keep private because okay. I feel like if I'm judged on that, I'm gonna be like heartbroken. Girl, you can't be judged. <laughs> You're only judge yourself. That's like, true. Don't take that's anybody's true. criticism. I if that's something on, you love to do, yeah, I, I sing on Instagram sometimes. Okay. So one thing about me, like if I take a, like I like to bake, so I'll bake and I like show like the the you know the progress, progress. on Instagram stories, and when you take a bite it's just like mm, like it just you know makes okay. you You're harmonizing it just got that mm, you know and i kind of like i let out like a little a little melody sometimes you should do a segment singing with sarah right and like little like That's chorus true. and everything yes. you know what i mean do it and, 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 and then you war, warm yourself up to where yes. you can actually do a whole thing that's a good idea. But my something. husband plays like every instrument under the sun. So, and he was in a band. Okay. Um, so I think having him being like musically talented kind of like also like just like Enhanced. we'll just, we'll fuck around like because we have a, dr- a drum set at home and like all the mics set up and we'll just fuck around on, you know, play do some you do music. it naked? Uh, we haven't done that yet. Mm. See, I'm giving you all kinds You're of things. You're giving me a lot of good ideas. Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. One more question before Truth with Texas. Hmm. Um, what can I do? Have you ever, since you were so promiscuous with, you know, or not really promiscuous, mm-hmm. but you're very like open with your husband yes. and just your sex life and being in the industry, have you ever or would you ever attend a swingers party? Um, we have. Ooh. We're in LA. I feel like Did this you is like Swinger just City Central. Like look on the out. Were you just a looky loo, or were you participating? Yes. Were you so like kind no. of like warming up to things? We were looky loos. Okay. And um, so my biggest issue with those, or like at least the one that we went to, is you know I'm in the industry, so I'm tested. Mm-hmm. Everybody that I work with is tested. My husband's tested. We're all tested. Are you guys tested here? Are you? Te- can you show me a test? Did you take a test? No. Okay. Well, then Are I they don't using feel comfortable. Condoms? Uh, so they do have that, but like, who uses? Who wants to? What? What's a condom? <laughs> yeah, but when you're in a situation like that, unless no, you definitely un- want to use one. Unless I like again I agree with the whole testing part of thing like that, but yeah. I feel like well, I've only been to one by accident, and it was like <laughs> I got like shuttled there in this bus not knowing where the fuck I was going but I definitely never saw anybody's test I wasn't in involved Mm -hmm. but I was watching but I was like the the same thing too but I don't think that was somebody years ago I don't think there was any condoms involved but it felt like it was like it was a room full of people that they had their own little encounters and it mm-hmm. wasn't super groupish. So, mm. but then like, I feel like later on like it could have kind of, but like I feel like it kind of kind of like became something more afterwards. Cause I was like, all right, cool. I'm not participating. Gotta go. When someone started trying to grab me, I'm like, nah, I'm <gasps> yeah. out. I'm like, they do that. Cause they want you to, cause they want yeah. you to participate. Right? Exactly. I get it. Cause I'm there. I mean, I am like watching like, whatever. yeah, like exactly. So You're they're there. Like, they like started grabbing. Cause my, one of the girlfriends that I was there with, she started making out with somebody and da da da. And I was like, Good for you. I'll see you downstairs. I'm going to yeah. get a drink at the bar. Come find me. But in that, in that situation <laughs> was, I, I mean, nobody showed a test. Nobody did whatever. So I can mm-hmm. see in that aspect after being in a performer in a testing world yeah, where I'm that can be a that. little bit like standoffish where I'm like, yes. mm, I want to fuck you, but can you call me tomorrow when you have your <laughs> test and you've done whatever? Because yeah. I also too, and the flip side was when I saw people doing group things that didn't have condoms mm. and then they'd go to set, I'd be like, I'm not, you're on my no list. Yeah. 
because for me it's like at that time testing was very different in the regulations it was like it was every 20 days or 18 days or whatever wow. so it was a lot of things for like miss you know I mean, if you went to a party last night, but your test was still good from whatever, yeah, that's not necessarily what's going to happen but today. Homeboy so. didn't test exactly, right? yeah. so it was just very <sighs> for a safety thing. I'm like, for I used to always say like. It's like playing Russian roulette, and I already take choices already. <laughs> anyway, I make the, you know I make that conscious decision myself yeah. that I'm not trying to put the gun in your hand. So yeah, exactly, I'm gonna respectfully decline. Yeah. So. so when we were watching, so there was like bowls of condoms in like every room, even like the kitchen in the living room. There's just condoms everywhere when we were at that party. But again, nobody was using them. Mm. And so, but yeah, we were just there to watch because I have never been to one, and I hear all about them all the time. And I was like, let's go to one. Like fuck it, let's. Did go it turn see. you on? I, I yeah, I like watching li- like the it's like a live. It was a live performance. Yeah. I was like, okay, I can do this. Did you like fuck this. your man on the side or did you wait to go home? So I actually, we waited because I think it was like, I get like social anxiety sometimes, especially okay. like in a new environment. And dicks and pussy everywhere. And yeah, I mean, and there's dicks okay. and pussies. And I, I knew not a single soul in there, but like the one girl that like brought us there because she goes to them all the time. Um, so was, I literally knew her, her man, and then my husband. And it, it was just like, it wasn't uncomfortable, but it was a, a little bit like, it was unfamiliar. So like, I think naturally when something's unfamiliar, it's uncomfortable, yeah. right? Um, so I think I was just like, I, I was like, oh, I, I don't, I, I'm not ready for this. Like yeah. maybe at the, like, but now like, I think I've been, so I've been to two. Um, and again, I was a Lukey Lou at the, the second one as well. And that one was really weird. They were doing weird stuff stuff there i was like i gotta go um i don't i don't dab into like, like but um, stuff, recreational um drugs drugs and okay, so i don't okay. do any of that i don't okay. yeah i'm i don't do that so when i saw that i didn't feel comfortable so okay let's okay. leave fair enough. um yeah i mean I, if you do that that's great but i i don't so i'm yeah. gonna bounce respectfully <laughs> out of here yeah so but i think if we went to a third one and i felt comfortable i would definitely fuck my man okay with the group but i don't i don't think i would Maybe you fight your man and then you find one girl, so it's like you know you. Yeah, maybe that. Or like if I knew everybody, um, I would probably be more, more open. open. Yeah. Okay. To like the orgy. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. Truth with Texas. We're going to do a fast little round. I know you have to get out of here. So, how it's going to work, I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. Kinky, naughty, romantic, and um, spicy. I'm already I think sweating. we're all a little spicy. <laughs> all right. Kinky questions Shower sex or car sex? Oh, car sex. Have you ever tasted your own cum? Every day. What does it taste like? Um, it's so, it tastes like, <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of my breast milk. Okay. A little bit. It's like, like cereal milk? Kind, kind of, maybe. Of, yeah, like, yeah like, there's a little bit of sweetness. In the, like, in the marshmallow thing yes. that you're having. <laughs> Lucky Charms. <laughs> I've tasted breast milk before, n- not when I was a baby, but... <laughs> Well, yeah, I wasn't breastfed like as a baby. Yesterday, actually, no, not that soon, but maybe like um, Tori you know Black. Who? Actually, oh. she after she had one of her children. You know who shot breast one. milk into my mouth? Who? Lena the plug. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's we were in like a van, sweet. in a white van, and she just and I was like, okay. I like how the white van has preference. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds creepy, but it was hot. It was time. so hot. Bondage, yes or no? Um, light bondage. The weirdest place you've had sex. Um, on top of a a freezer (laughs) in like a storage in the restaurant that we used to work at. And he kept his dick hard. I like it. (laughs) Sex skill that you are most proud of? Um, I guess writing. I try to get my Kimmy Granger on. Ooh, okay, okay. (laughs) Don't know what that means, but okay, okay. Um, most number of times that you've had sex in one day? Oh, only like four. I guess that's, is that a lot? That's not a lot to me. From it's not stories a lot. that, yeah. I've had, I've heard, I think the most I've heard on here was like 15. <laughs> oh, kind of like that. You know, it's only. No, yeah, four. I'm maxed out, baby. I'm maxed it's out. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Your max is your max. <laughs> yeah. All right. Have you ever watched midget porn? Um, no, I have not. Are we allowed to say midget? I don't know. I do, but this is. <laughs> we'll see if they're small people. The small I'm not, people. I was like people. small little people. Yeah, little people. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not. not. I'm like little people. I'm porn. down to watch. Okay. Yeah. I used to have a little people kind of not a fetish, but I definitely was like oh. entertained. I'm like, I want to have sex with a little person so I can okay. like be the dom and like you yeah, know lift them like up and like spin one. somebody yeah. around yes. in my vagina. <laughs> like I feel like I want to see if that works. Like yeah, you should I do like that. that. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, not no. You know, we respect all the little people. We respect the little people. All right, spicy question do you like dirty talk oh i love it can you give us an example of your dirty talk um, you won't sing for me but you can dirty yeah talk for me. i i just like when a guy is in my ear like really close to my ear like breathing heavy and is like you're such a fucking good girl like mm-hmm. get down on the stick or like you know things like that have you worked with manuel ferrara 
Uh, I have. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, he does it the was whispering all French. Thing. Um, he whispers, he whispers yeah. the things. But it was all French. At least for me, it was. But isn't that hotter? So, I know it was like, hot. I'm like, I like, had no I'm like, idea. I don't want to know what the fuck you're saying. Yeah. Just keep saying it. Yeah, my husband's trilingual. So I'm like, switch the languages up, baby. Nice. What you got for me today? So it's like a babble. Like, you know, they'd be like, hey, today can we do yeah. Spanish? Right. Today can we do French? <laughs> Duolingo, please. I like that. <laughs> hmm. Have you ever stayed in a relationship for sex? Uh, well, I've been with my husband since I was 18. So, um, yes. <laughs> like his dick just never left yeah never left is there something completely off limits i know you've been with your husband for quite some time but is there something that even with you two that you're just not into um yeah i guess like fucking like a scene partner off camera okay. or anybody off camera okay. is like if if we are not involved or we don't know about it like basically cheating like you know i know people are like well you fuck on camera with other people isn't that cheating yeah but within your ga- um, boundaries of what you guys <laughs> yeah have communicated like, if he, like if i like went and fucked like somebody without him knowing that like that's not okay and vice versa so, that's. all right have you ever had sex in a toilet seat <laughs> no. <laughs> have you ever injured yourself during sex all the time. How do you get yeah, I So I'm 107 pounds. I'm like hollow inside. <laughs> and I am so fragile. And when you work. <laughs> that sounds so funny. Brother. When you work with like Jack Slayer or, you know, every guy is big to me. Okay. So they just like, they'll like swing my leg back. And I'm like, ah, wait, like, hold, hold on. I gotta stretch a little bit. You're like, sorry, um, yeah. you gotta work it out. <laughs> Ice packs, please. I'm not flexible. I'm not as flexible as I wish I was. Okay. Maybe if I stretch. Naughty questions. Choked or spanked? Oh, I like being choked. Lube or spit? Spit. Handcuffs or blindfold? Blindfold. Have you and your husband ever paid for sex? No. <laughs> why is that so funny? I don't know why that's so funny. But no. <laughs> I'm like, you know, you would think that sometimes because of the fact that y'all are so open oh, about it. I've been paid for it, actually. Okay. Um, one of my buddies, he was like a friend, and I used to like mess around with him like right when I graduated high school. <laughs> He was like, he was like, I'm so horny, like I need you, and I'm like, no, nah, like fuck you, and he was like, I'll literally pay you, and I was like, all right, fine. <laughs> what was your rate? <laughs> In high school, I mean, uh, we never. Knew. I I think I made him pay me like 150 dollars or Cute. something. Thank okay. you, thank you, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, paid for gas for like the whole month. So hey, I was I mean, like, after solid. high school, I mean, hey, yeah, we're no. winning. And we're I wasn't winning. working at the time. Okay. So, you know, so it, it really it went a long way. Went a long it really did. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest turn off. Uh, bad breath. Bad breath. All right. Yeah. Romantic questions. Last set of questions. Making out or cuddling? Making out. Cut or uncut? Uh, uncut. Giving or receiving? I like giving. Lights on or lights off? Um, lights off. What are deal breakers for you in a relationship? I know you said cheating is one, but is there anything else that kind of stands out for you? Um, just not being like, you know, having like different views on like big things in life. So not being on the same page. kind Exactly. Of yeah. Okay. That ain't gonna work. Dinner or a movie? I like to eat. So dinner. Sex on the first date? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. <laughs> Favorite place to be kissed? Uh, on my neck. Neck kisses. Yes. Love it, love it, love, love it. it. That is Truth with Texas. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us and answering all the questions. I yes. hope you had fun. I had a lot of fun getting to know you. Is there anything you'd like to ask Miss Texas before you leave? Um, yeah, what's your biggest like piece of advice about being in the industry, especially you've been in it for so long? Like, What's like one little piece of advice? Um, I would say do what makes you feel happy. You know, I always feel like, you know, to each his own. And that was like something I've lived by for like ever since I started. And it's just that if you you feel comfortable doing what you're doing then don't worry about anybody else's opinion just have fun you have a partner that loves you who supports you and like your mm-hmm. your inner circle is more important than anybody of the outsiders although yes. they're the ones that we do it for but i feel like sometimes we give so much that we have to keep a little bit for ourselves to continue being who we are these content creators so just stay true to yourself i love it perfect yes. so let us know where we can support you follow you and all those things uh sarah illustrates pretty much on every platform sarah illustrates vip is my only fans and um oh my twitter is sarah's world x3 Ooh, That's there it. you go private yes. talk i hope you guys enjoyed this interview as much as i did doing it make sure you go and subscribe like and follow until we meet again
This episode is sponsored by Bet Online.